Right, so welcome to the Callaway Vodcast, the Range Pass, number number six we're at now. With us today, we've got, as always, head technician on the Callaway truck, Paul Monks. Monksy, how are you, pal? Yeah, all good, thanks, Zane. All good. Nice good and warm at the moment. Looking, yeah, you're looking tanned. Looking tanned, pal. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got special guest, four-time European Tour winner, Matt Wallace. How are you, pal? Good, thank you, Zane. How are you? Yeah, good. So you're at the. So you guys were in Wales, is that correct? Mm. Uh, we're here in uh, like Celtic Manor. It's very hot, as Monksy said. He's down on the truck. I'm in the media centre here. Um, very, very warm today. Uh, breeze has picked up this afternoon, but um, lovely, lovely place. Nice. And uh, Monksy, have you got the AC on full blast in the truck? Yeah, it's flat out. It's quite it's, it's quite nice in here to be fair. I had to nip out earlier to try and get a shaft off uh, off someone, and I stepped outside and look, and we got hit by. It's like stepping into an oven. <laughs> nice, nice. So Matt, so you're back in Europe. So you were at the Open last week, Wales this week. How what's it like to be home? You spent I know you spent a lot of time in the States, haven't you? So is it nice to be back? Is it not nice to be back? Oh no, it's great to be back. Um, I don't think it's never not nice to come home. Um, so had to spend, I say I had to, I did spend a lot of time over in America playing um, with the restrictions that, was, the, that were going on back here. I couldn't exactly just come home for a week to see family, friends, whatever it may be. Um, and I was playing on the PGA Tour, you know, uh, and at the time it was the place to be. So was was very happy to stay out there and play and, and work on my game. Um, but I didn't get to see Monksy, you see. I didn't get to see Monksy, so I couldn't get some of my stuff sorted out. And uh, I know we're going to talk about that later on, but uh, it's very good to be back. And, and Monksy made a Monksy special last week for the Open that we'll, we'll talk about in a bit. Yes, he did. And also, we, we, did actually, we actually did a bit of an Insta Live didn't we, during the first we lockdown. Did. And you, uh, you wore your Manchester United shirt, which you're not wearing today. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not really, I don't think it would go down quite well here in Wales, firstly, especially with Gareth around, but um, no, big Man United fan, And uh, but this week it's, it's JL all the way. Right, so, um, okay, so we're going to do a bit of background, so we've got a bit of background as to what football team you support, mm. but we're going to stick to the, the goal side, side of things. Yeah. So, so you've got four European tour wins, Made in Denmark, BMW International, Hero Indian Open, uh, Open to Portugal. So, you know, winning is a thing that you may, you know, have had made a, ha- made a habit, but there's a bit of a, a backstory to that because you were, as I understand it, when we first met, you were winning at other levels and other places. What's, the, what's been your kind of journey from, you know, being an amateur golfer, yeah. getting a bit of a talent for it, and then into professional golf? What's been your, what's been your journey? What have been your Well, it hasn't from been... Under- it hasn't been, like, the, the smooth ride that you normally hear about, you know, the, the, the young talented kid who comes out on tour and manages to get out on tour and and wins in his first or second year you know uh it took me a while uh not to say i wasn't a great player back then but i wasn't the player that i needed to be to to get out on tour and um i was a decent golfer amateur golfer plus four um so to anyone listening who's who thinks they're going to just turn pro and make it you don't just do that and zane you'll know that from from myself being a, a, a young superstar, it's not that it's not that easy to get out on tour. Um, and I go, went out to America, played in in uh, Jacksonville State for a year, and then got into the elite squad back in England. So I decided to come home. And even then, I thought, okay, yeah, I really want to I want to do this. I want to play professional golf, but I didn't know how good you needed to be. So I went and played mini tours. Um, I played on the Alps Tour. Um, and it took me four years to to understand how how to play this game. You know, professional golf was the best decision I made uh, to turn pro, to learn from these guys out on tour. And, uh, and these guys have been around for a while. Uh, but I needed something different to them. I needed to to not be them in, in five, six, seven years' time. But I had this epiphany moment when I was back at home. I was on my parents' sofa and... I just, I was, think I was 24, 25 at the time. And nothing was really, really quite going right for me. I was working hard, but nothing was quite going my, my way. And I had this moment of, what am I going to do in like six years' time? 
am I still going to be on this sofa? Am I still going to be here with my parents earning 50p on the Alps tour or whatever it was? <laughs> and I just took that moment right there. Like, that's not going to be me. I'm not going to be that person. I'm going to, this is going to be my job now. This is, so it, it was still fun for me, but it was going to be my job. I was going to, I was gonna, really going to go for this. So, um, I started seeing different coaches and I got to a point where my third year I had a real good chance to win some tournaments, but my technical side didn't allow me to. So then I went to go and see a a guy called Matt Belsham, who you know Zane really well. He's been out on tour for a while. And I just said to him, my technical side doesn't allow me to play under pressure. I I felt fine in that situation, but I just couldn't get the job done. And then that next year, uh, when I felt comfortable and confident in my technical side, I won six times uh, in that year on the Alps Tour, um, five in a row, which is kind of unheard of a little bit, and um, gained a load of experience and a load of confidence from that. To then next year, um, got into the actually got a, a got very lucky, got an invite from Keith Pelly into the uh, Open to Portugal, and that was a co-sanctioned event, and I won it. So then I was out on tour. So going from an Alps tour player in December, I was a full European tour player come uh, February and then playing Wentworth the next week. Amazing. That's the, what, yeah. what, a, what a great journey, you know, and it showed the, the kind of the hard, hard work that goes in behind the scenes and also the yeah. decision making, you know. Yeah, um, it, it's, you, also, you, have to, you have to be very precise. You have to be very precise with the decision making and it's got to work for you, you know. Uh, so I, a lot of people tell me what was the, what was the, you know the thing that you got and I said I learned about myself I had to I had to you know um, I had to go and play and see myself what I needed to do and what I needed to do was lose tournaments to then win tournaments do you know what I mean I had to have the hard times to then go and see a new coach to go actually I wasn't very good in those moments to then go and win yeah, it's, it's really interesting. I've had this conversation a few times recently in that it all going plain sailing doesn't really happen very often and also it's not that great for you. Yeah. Some of your best times come out of out of the yeah. pain of doing poorly. I mean, everyone was uh, talking about like, like Bryson last week. I think like he misjudged how to approach that open so badly that he would, he'd come out of it better from listening to his as words. As long as you're open to, to that and you're not, and you're not you, you don't just shut it off and put the blinkers on. Um, I think it's so important that you are open to mistakes. I think, like you say, you have to fail to to then learn and get better. So um, I've always been okay with failure. I've always been okay with missing cuts. But I think you need to look at why you do that and be so into it that you can learn from it. And it's not not easy to do. It's not easy to just go, I'm going to learn from that because you've really got to go into detail as to why, you know, why did I fail? Why did I not work yeah. hard enough? Did I, was my preparation good enough? You know, there's so many variables that can go into it, um, but you've got to be open to it. You've got to be open to failure. Yeah, pretty cool. So I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to bring Mungsy in here. So Mungsy, you've got, you know, you've got a guy here, Matt, who's obviously wants to get, he's got a thirst to get better and improve and already a good player, but wants to keep going. And at the beginning of 2020, so he gets his, you know, he's come from another equipment manufacturer, he's moved across to Callaway. What's what's your approach for like a, a player like Matt coming in, you know, a good player already? What's your, do you have any preconceived ideas or journey of how you're going to go? Or is it, this, let's just take it from day one and see where we sit? Well, I think so, to start off with, you've kind of got a, I've got to learn what Matt's about because before, I mean, although Matt's been on tour for quite a while, you know, I, I didn't know Matt. I don't know him. No one say hello to. So kind of like you start building up a friendship of what he likes, what he doesn't like to see, you know, and and chat through from there, and then look at look at equipment, and then you know slowly advise until we kind of gain each other's trust because you know if if we do if we get you know if we if we push Matt down potentially down the wrong avenue. You know, it's just that's just painful, and you know, it's, that's not the way we want to go. So it's kind of just taking note and listening, and you know, almost less is more at times. You know, just get feedback from from Matt, and you know, and understand what where where he wants to go, and, and then from that we can 
we can advise on the equipment that we think he should use and and choose you know a couple of paths down there that hopefully you know at the end of it pushes us forward yeah that's, that's good good info there so, so matt what was your what was your journey like you know switching across to callaway is there anything you did which went, went well was there anything or any little pieces you think actually if i you know if I've, i got out of you know as you said from learning yeah from situations which are slightly adverse? Is there something you would, you know, take yeah. forward? Well, it, it was my first, yeah, it was my first ever big move. I'd been with the, my last manufacturer for seven years. Um, also the ball as well, which I've recently moved into. Um, it's, if I could do it all again, and I, I've told Monksy about this, um, I'd do it in a slightly different way. What I, what I did, was we tried to make up very similar clubs um, to represent what I had last time to move into what was then the Maverick and uh, I remember in Abu Dhabi and bearing in mind I think Monksy and, and the other guys on, on the truck and with, with Ian Garbutt and a lot of the other guys they've got such a hard job right because it is that we're hitting the golf ball so like can they find us a club that goes 300 down the middle well, yeah, but we've got to deliver. We've still got to step up and hit the shots. They've got such hard, such a hard job to do. But at that time, I don't think I was swinging it great um, in comparison to what I should have been doing. Uh, I told them exactly what I wanted to achieve, but I was probably doing the opposite in, in my approach. So we made up a set of, of Mavericks, uh, Apex Pros, uh, the wedges were sensational, so they were fine. And then the putter was very similar to what I had last time. So, yes, it would have been very the same. But when you are changing manufacturers, I think you just kind of, you've got to be very close to starting from scratch. You've got to understand what you want to achieve. And then with how good Monksy is at building clubs, he'll be able to do that for you. But then when you take it away, you've got to be really open and really honest with what you're what you're feeling, what you're going to hit. So I remember uh, I had the Maverick driver that I couldn't quite do what I was trying to do. And then in lockdown, during lockdown last year, I was still able to practice out in, in America. And I just changed a bit of the weight at the back. So the CG changed a little bit and I was able to then put a bit more spin on the ball, which then allowed me to fade it. You know, and the, my, the, my center strike was a lot more consistent, which is massive for spin and launch and everything. So I stuck with that for a while, but it was a little bit of a, a, a plaster over a, a crack, you know. So, um, but now with the epic stuff, um, it is, it's night and day. I mean, I've gone to a blade. I'm using a blade iron, which I'd never done before at my last manufacturer. But I'm a better golfer now. I can work the ball both ways. I've spoken about that with the guys that I want to be able to play flighted, low, high, left to right, right to left, all of these shots. And so they're like, well, you've got to move into a blade to be able to do that. And But you've then got to turn up. So, um, And like I was saying before, the Monksy special last week, we were in Scotland two weeks ago and I had a driving iron that I just wasn't happy with the flight. The spin was too low. I could only move it left to right. I couldn't move it right to left or anything like that. And we went through maybe, what, three shafts last week? Uh, quite a rush, Monksy, in, in Scotland. Uh, just before they were about to leave, so I'm sure he was really happy with me about that. Um, I'm just envisioning you chasing him down the driveway, waving at him. <laughs> I wasn't. It was Lordy, my caddy. So I was still just grinding away, losing my head on the range a little bit. Um, but he came back with this... Uh, this driving iron seat, the KBS uh, shaft in that I've used previously. And it just, it worked. So him knowing my game, him knowing how I want to play a little bit and with it being something that I've used before, I didn't miss a fairway with it last week at the Open. Wow. It was Amazing. it was brilliant. Uh, the 14th hole, tough par five, you know, with the out of bounds up the right. Yeah. I couldn't have put these four balls, you know, I could have put a towel over them, you know, and Lordy was like, this club's special for, for this week and going forward. So I've got that now for, for good. So tip of the cap to Monksy and I owe you a beer. <laughs> yeah. So Monksy, so hearing that obviously makes you feel pretty good, I'm sure, that, you know, you've you got, you got them out of a, 
um, headspace which I wasn't happy with into a club that he's loving. Like with that, so you hear that he likes that. Do you like? Um, do you just put that into into the computer in your head? Do you like? Do you build on a backup one? You know how 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 did and how did you come to? For a better question, how did you come to that? Right, this I think Matt's going to do really well with this shaft, this setup, this weight. Well, I think. How did you make that? Yeah. Decision? I mean, I think that just um, kind of signifies the type of relationship you know um, Matt has with, has with the team, and in that instance, it was you know I was the one at the front you know, at the arrowhead when the decision had to be made. And so I've looked back and I know Matt was sometimes quite likes a, a synergy between what the same model driver shaft and his fairy would. So we were trying to go down that route with the with the driving iron. It just wasn't working. And so, you know, we're bouncing shafts back. I think we did two shafts. They weren't working. And so I thought, right, you know, it's just experience yeah. really. I thought, right, I got, you know, it's getting late on a Wednesday now. I know Matt's getting, you know, stressed because he, either can't do what he wants to do or he's not getting what he wants but doesn't know what he wants or what he needs as as monk sorry to interrupt as monksy as knows that i want this stuff done last week i wouldn't want this stuff doing on a wednesday so yeah. for me to go to him say listen we need a new club that's very rare for me right. but monksy was great that day so that that was for me that was like okay we're building this club for the open not for scotland because i'd have want this done a week in advance yeah yeah Right. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. Matt is very prepared like that, and and uh, you know we do we chat before events. So yeah, I mean, that's a, you know that's I know the thing is I know that on that Wednesday it was obviously it was just important right then because we discovered something that needs to change. So really, just like like Matt said, I just looked back through looked back through some of his previous builds, saw this KBS, and remember kind of in my head I've got a, a memory of it and thinking yeah that worked quite well at that period of time. So maybe we just reintroduce that. You know, it's got a familiarity mm. about it. And so, you know, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go down that route. And it was obviously, you know, a light bulb moment, really. So uh, what I do is, from my point of view, mm. choose that shaft, build it to Matt's spec. And then, you know, from there, it obviously worked out. He loved it and it worked out quite well. Nice. Like it. So just real quick, while we're on the, the um, subject of equipment, Matt, can you give us a quick run through just your club setup? You haven't got to give us every single detail and weight swing weight and everything every club but are you like one three five are you driver three with hybrid yeah driver three with so one i've up? got i've got pretty much every single club with me most weeks um right. and then the setup of the golf course a setup of the uh some of the holes you know so and then my wedges um so i've probably got 17 18 clubs with me every single week and i'll chop and change between my three iron and my hybrid Right. Um, and like last week was a special week. So I've got a great stats team behind me and we realized I, I hit one three wood all week, one three wood. Right. Um, and that was on 18 on the final day. I hit one right. three wood, uh, and we were tempted to take the three wood out, just play driver, two iron, three iron all the way through 50, yeah. 50 degree, 55, 60. Mm -hmm. But we took the 50 out, had the three wood in. So I had a quite a big gap between my 114 club, my 55, and my 140 club, my pitching wedge. So I had a I had a big gap. But I know that I can play a 120 pitching wedge. I know I can play a 130 pitching wedge. Um, and you don't have those sh a lot of those shots at an Open Championship where it's mm. just a stock wedge. You just don't get them because the wind is too much. You need to flight it. You need to curve it, whatever it is. So we fell onto uh, a right. gap wedge maybe twice last week, but I was okay with hitting a pitching wedge and, and, and feeling one in there. So there was a th we needed a, a three iron set up last week for the third hole and the 11th hole. It was never a two iron. That was too hot yeah. and it was never a four iron. It wouldn't have got there. So it worked out really well, but that's the preparation that you need to go into. So my normal makeup would be 60, 55, 50, pitching wedge through to four iron uh, with a modus shaft in, uh, in all of them. And then um, I go uh, rescue uh, with a Ventus in. Right. It's a Ventus at the moment, I think, Ventus blue. And then a Ventus in the uh, forward. So I've got a forward that's bent down to 15.6 because I like seeing the face slightly yeah. open rather than closed. Um, and then I've got the standard Epic Flash 
uh, Epic Speed, sorry, uh, that is uh, Ventus Blue Shaft as well, and the setting is uh, NS. Is it NS? Okay, I think it's NS. So, yeah. So, so, yeah. So very standard. Very uh, all very standard. The even the the three wood. I don't like to 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 change too much. So when I've got Garby to make up or, or Monksy to make up mm. um, some clubs for me, I try and make them very similar because yeah. I know they're not the same. Um, but I try to make them as as close as possible. So then, if there is a slight change in the in the loft or uh, in the swing weight or anything, but even though the swing weight will be different, the weight at the back or the weight in, 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 yeah. in that you put in the head may be different. I like to try and see a nice, nice level playing field when I'm trying to test the club yeah. or do something. Yeah, it's it. fascinating to just hear the, the, the preparation and the amount of clubs and you know making making your caddy carry a three with all week to use it once on the on the seventy second hole. I know, <laughs> I know. He was gutted about that. He would have rather have done 13. Clubs, was, he, but, was he trying to get you to hit it uh, on the last and say, it, look, can you just hit this cover? <laughs> <laughs> just so we used it once. It yeah. actually worked out perfect. It was just short of the trap on the right. But he actually said to me on the uh, Friday morning when the wind kind of switched, it was quarterly the other way. And he was like, three was not going to be used today, mate. And I was like, okay, do you want to put the, the wedge in? So then... And he was like, I think we, I think we should. And like, like I was saying to Monksy there, like I'm prepared come Wednesday, or Monday, that what I'm going to do. So I tried to, I said, just, just said to him, listen, let, let's not make this rash decision. Let's just stick with what we got. We know that we can use the pitching wedge, and we needed to shoot a couple. Well, we shot level par the first day. We needed to get ourselves into a tournament. We shot two under, and we didn't need to use a three wood or a gap wedge in the end. So. Um, my experience there kind of shone through a little bit, and that was that was important. Yeah, really interesting here, like the the, the, the fine details. You know, the details of uh, Monksy building you something on a Wednesday to fit that yeah. then go straight in the bag, and you know, and just talk. Well, I, I I'd I'd rather it fail. Not not. Uh, I want to win the Open. I want to win the Open. So I'm prepared to sacrifice a couple of days in Scotland. Um, right for them to be really confident yeah. with that club come the next week. In, in hindsight, I'd love, love to have done that the week before, mm -hmm. um, but I didn't have that opportunity. And it did come about that we got it done on Wednesday, but that's how good Monksy is. And that's how good the team are on the truck that they can get it done like yeah. that. And I used it that week as well. And it was, it was great. So yeah. it was straight in the bag. Yeah, it's fascinating. So another question, only a couple more questions. I know you've had a long old day of it, in back to back, no doubt. Um, yeah. Is what's it like now in in Europe back with the boys, about Garvey, Monksy, you know all, all the guys who you know you work with quite a lot with. Uh, what's it like in contrast to like the US team, US tour truck team? Is the back, you know, is the truck similar? Is it you know is it, is it laid out? Similar? Is it a completely different situation? Is there a nice thing uh, between the two? I mean. I think it comes down to trust, doesn't it, Zane? I think when it's your, they're your tools. They, these are the things. This is your job. You've got to just. It's the trust side, and I trust. Uh, I trust a couple of people over in the in the states, um, but the guys. If I had to use clubs with for the rest of my life, it would be the guys over here, It'd be Garvey and Monksy, you know. Really? Um, I'm really close with Joe Toulon over um, in America with my putting because mm -hmm. I, I, they made a putter up for me that was identical to what I was using before uh, on the CAD cam and it was really identical. It's, it, was, it was brilliant. So Joe and Sean, I, I know really well over there. So I have a real good connection with Joe with my putting and I've talked to him a lot with him and my putting coach, Mike Kansky. Um, so I've got a lot of trust with them. I don't have as much trust with the other guys because I don't spend as much time with them as much as I do with Monksy and Garby. And um, the good thing with Garby is that he's done it, you know. He's yeah. played, he's been there. And him talking with, with Liam, my coach, and just talking about three woods and four woods and how to hit them better. And I had this left pull bias with my my uh, my three would and we spoke about ball position we spoke about angle of attack and spin and all of that and 
if anything, he gave me a tip. You know, he gave me some some advice about my yeah. game, and so you, you, I won't be listening to that to other, from other people. But because I I trust Garby, I, I've got a great relationship with those guys over here. Um, I'm happy for them to to be dealing with my golf clubs, which are basically my my life and my tools. Yeah, yeah. So, so getting the the the, the well, it's impressive to hear the, the detail that goes into your equipment, and and it's not just you know, not the set clubs thrown together. Yeah. You know, the, like the team that go into. It, I know because you're you know you're big on your team. You always yeah. have good people around you and pick up little bits. It's interesting to hear the detail that goes. Into it, there's you know, there's in more than to... that as well, you know, Zane. There's more to yeah. it than, than us just talking and saying this. Like, yeah. I'll be in contact with, with these guys saying, right, how are we going to improve? I remember at the start of this year, um, I, I felt like I wasn't maximising my potential with my, my swing speed. Um, I was around the 74, 75, and my, my spin was up in the... I always wanted, because of my last manufacturer, I always wanted more spin. And I was up around the right. 2,800 mark and uh, yeah. I spoke with the guys and they were like, well, that's why you're not getting your, your maximum potential out of your, your driver. You're spinning it too much. We need to get you down the 2-2, two, 2-4. Two, two, and then we'd talk about the draw, the fade, the shot you go to, yeah. and then wind off the left, wind off the right and all that. And I'm now up at like 177, 178 uh, ball, uh, uh, ball speed. Right. Club speed yeah. is like 117, 118. And I'm maximising yeah. my potential with my driver, and that's all down to being in contact with these guys on a weekly basis and talk about it. So yeah. uh, the work that they do is not just on the truck; it's over text. Yeah. It's getting to know the guys, getting to know us, what we want to achieve. And this is why I came to Callaway is because I want to achieve. I want to win majors. I want to win tournaments. And this is why I came to Callaway is because I believe they're the people that can do that for me. Fantastic insight. I mean, I've, over these last few vodcasts, I was getting to pick Monksy's brain and hear all, all the all the bits that got on. I know and we haven't chatted to you too much today, Monksy, but it's just been, it's been great getting. Sorry, some, I've spoken too much. Out of, out of Matt here. Well, interesting enough, um, just to kind of carry on with that theme there. Uh, you know, one of the questions I wanted to ask you was about you know, winning majors. You know, you've won you've won every level. You know, you've won. Um, you know, you've won multiple times on the European tour and you've been at the Open last week and I'm sure you've got something out yeah. of it. Is it, do, are you clear on what, what you want to do to win majors or is it, are you still working it out? Where are you at? No, I, I know what it takes. Uh, obviously, with the stats, um, I know the areas I need to improve on so that when I'm practicing on the range, it's not just anything. I know for certain weeks, I know exactly uh, what it will take that week to, to be in contention. Nobody teaches you how to get the job done. You need to learn that yourself. You, you just got to feel that. And that's why I think winning like uh, breeds winning. You know, you've, I've always been told that by my manager, Chubby. You need to, you need to get in those positions a lot to, to get across the line. So, um, but I know what it takes to get, to get the job done. Uh, I just haven't, done, I haven't been in that position enough uh, recently to get it done um, a lot of heart a lot of uh, grit determination um, but in a majors in the majors from what I've seen I've obviously I've had some some decent success but not enough to to say that I can uh, win it like straight away I need to learn more I need yeah. to be a lot more patient I've got a great bag man who's won a major before uh, with Henrik Stenson Gareth Lord um, he was brilliant last week amazing at the open um, just in the way he dealt with the situations that we were in, how to play the golf course, how to how to plot our way around, just fantastic. Um, but I know I'm in the right position. I know I've got a great team around me. I've yeah. got the right equipment. I've got the right ball. Um, I moved into the ball this year, the Chrome Soft X, from what I was using before, and that was a mm. difficult move for me. It was really difficult because of Right. How confident I was with the last ball, but this ball has taken me like, like I say, it's given me more speed, it's given me more control in wind. Uh, I'm able to move the ball more, uh, and I'm getting more spin around the greens. So I mean, uh, how can you how yeah. can you not go to it? And the and the facts are behind it. So uh, I did a lot of work. I did about six months of the ball, didn't I, Monksy? I did about six months of work with the ball. Uh, every single week 
off week, different winds, different temperatures, right. different countries, different grasses. Mm -hmm. And uh, I finally moved into it at Bay Hill this year and uh, used it in hardest conditions on the Sunday and uh, managed to shoot one under, uh, one of three people to shoot under par that day. And that was the hardest condition. So it was a great test that week and uh, it's a solid, solid ball. Uh, it's fascinating to uh, hear the detail um, that, that goes into it. Amongst you, if I'm, if I'm right, amongst you, I'm pretty sure John Rahm, he kind of he he picked up the ball, didn't he? He said, kind of said the ball was like a real, real good move for him. And I'm pretty sure he said the same as Matt there in terms of it being stable in the wind. Is that is that right? Is it, and then also, is that something that you've heard from some of the other players? Yeah, yeah, a lot of guys mentioned that. I mean, obviously, John Rahm mentioned that um, in his um, US Open speech. So. Uh, and he liked that about the ball would hold its line in wind or he could shape it. And so, yeah, I mean, a lot of guys do discuss that, you know, between themselves. And we hear them when, you know, when, they, when they're kind of on and around the trucks. Unfortunately, we're still not allowed on the trucks this week. But, uh, but yeah, no, it's, um, it's a common theme. I mean, you know, Matt did, we did a lot of testing in Dubai this year with Matt, you know, working on his set yardage, some of the shots he likes hitting, you know, is from almost from 10 yeah. yards all the way out, you know, bunker shots. And so, I mean, it's... Um, you know, from that side of things, I don't get to do a lot of that because a lot yeah. of times I'm on the truck and I've got to say it's quite impressive when you watch, you know, watch Matt's um, dedication, preparation, you know, that, that to me is that, you know, when you, when you see someone putting that level of effort into their game, it just, you know, it makes me want to just build the best I possibly can because I know if, if, I, if I do that, then Matt can get the potential out of the club because I know he's going to push it as far as he yeah. can. And that's why I moved to Callaway. That was, that's the exact reason why I moved, because they can see how much we put into it. Yeah. And then we, in return, get the best quality product to be able to achieve what we want to achieve. And you can't ask for a better, better uh, team environment than that. Yeah, I mean, uh, to, amongst you've, you've kind of said there, um, you know, what I was going to ask you, like, you know, listen to Matt, I find it really, really interesting that he's not, he's not there's no, there's no like, I'm going to leave this to chance. He's ringing like literally ringing everything out of his talent and his opportunity that he's got there and it's quite inspiring to listen to it you know for you know for the, you know just trying to find his way whatever it be and every bit he's mentioned there where the stats working hard the mental side of it the equipment dr drumming down on the ball with the driver and everything i mean there's that you kind of said there already but like it's probably a good thing, you know, gives you a bit of drive and a bit of and a whole bit of responsibility to be able to deliver for this man. Must be quite, must be, could you something? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, you know, it makes me think about it at night. You know, just it makes me you know, pushes me. I want to be, you know, to you know, and the team. You know, can we be better? What can we do? You know, we're talking about it over dinner, over breakfast. Just something to pop in my, you know, pop in one of our heads, and we'll run that between us all. You know, it's just, we're almost trying to leave, you know, no stone. It doesn't WhatsApp you at midnight. What's that? And what's that at midnight? Sometimes we're in America. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Uh, right. It's fascinating. Uh, it's really, really great listening to you, Matt. Like, uh, go through all that and and give us all the some some detail and insight into what goes on. You know, we we don't see that, which is kind of the part of the podcast was to to show people what goes on. We see the bit on TV. We see like the winning putts go in and the great drives, but we don't see like the the work that goes in from you know from from Callaway side, from your side, from all your team side, and just uh, I think this uh, this is great what you're doing here and 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 showing uh, more of the behind the scenes and what it actually takes uh, to to lift that trophy. It starts from it starts from Monksy. It starts from the team at Callaway, uh, and then it comes to us, and then we try and deliver what we what we can do. Monksy is as good at his job as as we are at ours, you know. So uh, a lot of credit goes to him and the team at Callaway for doing that. Yeah. This has been this has been quite a nice podcast for Monks. He's had a lot of uh, been big. Yes, <laughs> yeah, too nice, isn't it? I'm going to have to go down there and ask him to do my grips or something. <laughs> uh, well, guys, let's, let's wrap it up. I really uh, really appreciate you guys hanging around there. I'm sure you're going to shoot off, get some dinner, get some rest. We've had a long couple of weeks, but thanks so much, guys. Yeah. Thank thank you very much, Matt. Have a great week and. Uh, Thank you. And go out and burn it up, and no doubt, we'll do it, hopefully, if you don't mind, we'll do it again at some point, hopefully after. 100%. We've got a lot more to talk to, but thanks for having me. Brilliant. And cheers, Mumsy. Thank you for your time, as always, pal. No worries. Thank you.
And there it is. So yeah, follow us on the on the social channels, and uh, yeah, we look forward to our next podcast. We've got a lot to live up to after this one. Brilliant. Thanks a lot. Thank you.